Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Shalini Mukherjee. I am a master functional trainer. I am a rehab practitioner. I am a nutrition consultant, so I give plans specific to sports nutrition, weight management, and I am a dental surgeon. I would first like to thank the Tolly Airtel Golf Center to talk about the subject which is so very to my heart. Posture corrections and an injury-free life. Given the current scenario and our lifestyle, we are sitting for almost 10, 12, 14. So what happens when we sit? Our hip is bent. We are slouching on the chair or on the bed, watching Netflix. Our back is rounded. The cage in front is compressed because when we round our shoulders in front, we are compressing our rib cage. Our lungs are inside our rib cage. So when we breathe in air, our lungs are unable to expand to the full capacity to take in the air. There's less oxygen reaching the individual cells in our body. So this leads to a compromised metabolism and it affects the efficiency of our body, which is our engine. The other thing that happens when we sit, I'll show you a side view. We normally round our backs, we drop our hip back, and we crane our neck in, in front. So it's a typical chair pose. We lose convexity and the concavity of our spine. Now, when we are in this position, there is too much strain in our neck because of our neck going forward. There is a lot of pressure on our lower back because we are bending our lower back forward. The back of our thighs is a muscle called as the hamstring. When we sit, our hamstring goes into contraction. It tightens up. Now, muscles are connected to our joints and our bones with tendons. So what happens when a muscle tightens up? The length gets shortened. There is a pull on the tendon, which attaches the muscle to the joint. So you feel the strain on the joint. Now the hamstring attached to our lower back and attached to the back of our knee. So when our hamstring gets, we feel the pressure either in our lower back or in our knee and we land up with tightness and injuries, stiffness and pain in these joints. The other thing that happens is that because of constant sitting, the muscles in our hip, our hip flexors, which bend our hip, also get shortened. And we experience, so when we are standing, we are unable to stand straight. Our hamstrings are tight, our hip dips at the back, and we are having rounded shoulders in front. Now, it's okay for a while, but if we are constantly in this position over a prolonged period of time, even if we want to lengthen, open, we are unable to do so because the tight muscles are pulling the joint towards it. So we are actually changing the position of our joints. So if you're an athlete or if you're a professional or if you're in any kind of sports, say racket sports or golf, when you're doing any kind of movement, say you're a tennis player, so you need to take your hand back. But if your shoulders have dropped in front, you're compensating and the pressure is similarly. And you are in this position. Stay here because you're supposed to open out your shoulders. So when you're giving the swipe with the club, you're unable to move efficiently. The pressure comes on your small joints. So 
there is compensation at your shoulder there is compensation at your elbow and you land up eventually with injuries so how do we go about this now if all of y'all are sitting on a chair you can watch me and do these simple basic movements so that you could incorporate that later in your routine on a daily basis which will open out the tight muscles and strengthen the weak muscles 90% of the time our, our movement is tight starting from our shoulder joint to our hips to our knees and we lose the flexibility and the mobility of our hips our ankles and our shoulders so when the mobility is affected the range of on the joint is affected so you cannot execute the movement correctly and you land up injuring the muscles which are overworked and tight and you have Uh, displacements of the vertebrae or you have a frozen shoulder or you have spondylosis so these eventually happen after prolonged period of disuse by particular muscles so let's begin with a simple basic movement get your hands by the side and just take your hands straight up over your shoulders now when i'm doing this movement I do not want you to lift your shoulder blades up to the ceiling. So I need you to maintain distance between your ears and shoulders. So you take your arms up as you inhale and bring them down. Let's do it two more times. Take it all the way up and bring it down. You'll feel the lengthening of your torso and spine. And bring it down. Now, let's get the arms by the side. palms facing your thighs and go sideways up touching the back of your palms and bring it down so as you inhale lift and bring it down so we are creating a movement around the rotator cuff and loosening it out and bring it down now we also need to warm up the muscles around our shoulders our elbows and our wrist so let's start with our wrist bend your elbows make a fist with your thumb out and bend the wrist towards you and away from you palms facing up towards you and away from you Let's do it a few times. Now get your arms facing down and do the same. Palms are facing the floor. We are creating some kind of movement at our wrist. Now get your palms facing each other with your thumb on top and you're doing an up and down. Watch me from the side. and down okay now extend your hands out in this and open out your fingers now take your palms facing the camera and bring it back down facing you take it up and take it down take it up and take it down take it up and down now take your left palm up with your right fingers just press it towards yourself and you will feel the stretching going all the way to the inner side of your elbow now drop it down and press it down you will feel the stretch to the outside of your elbow the same thing on the other side and drop it down and press so you're stretching out your flexors and extensors of your forearm and relax now get your hands by the side of your waist and let's go sideways up and down 
So you're feeling the lengthening of the sides of your torso. So you're creating a little mobility around your rotator cuff. Now, let's place our hands here because we are constantly in a forward shrug. We would like to open out our shoulders. So let's go one arm at a time, keeping your elbow in line with your shoulder. Keep moving your forearm up and center. It's okay if you cannot take it all the way up, but I do not want you to shrug your shoulders. Now get your hands back, palms facing up. Let's open out. Let's create an opening at our shoulders. You feel the stretch segment, your chest muscles, and squeeze your shoulder blades at the back. So what happens when our back is rounded? Our mid-back, which is our thoracic section, loses its mobility. Because it loses its mobility, the two ends of the spine, that is the cervical, get hypermobile to compensate for the movement. So you have excessive movements happening in your cervical and lumbar area leading to issues in these two areas. You get spondylosis, you get lower back pain. It is all related to a tight mid-back. So now I'm going to show you movements which will increase the mobility of your mid-back section. Now I want you to place your left hand out. Extend your right knee and turn on your hand straight back and bring it back. I do not want you to move your knees here. It is just the torso that is being moved. As you inhale, open out, feel the stretch in the right anterior segment of your chest. Exhale back. Let's do it two more times. One more. And released. Let's do the thing on the left. Right hand outside your left knee. Extend your left hand in front. Open out. Feel the step in the front and feel your back muscles working. They have been staying all this time. You're waking them up. Let's do it one more time. Let's do the whole sequence just once. Come with me. Take your arms straight up and bring it down. Let's take it sideways and bring it down. Get your hands close to your waist, palms facing up, keeping your elbow there, open out your forearm and bring it back. Take both your forearms and back to the center. Squeeze your shoulder blades at the back. Place this arm here, hand in front. Open out as you inhale. Exhale, slowly come back. Reverse, go to the opposite side. Open out. Come back to the center. I'm going to sit sideways so you can see me. I need you to come to the edge of your seat. I need a right angle at your knee, a right angle at your arm. I want your hands by the side, shoulder blades at the back. Pull your navel into your spine, chin away from your chest and go into a forward bend and come up. I do not want you to get your neck or shoulders in front. Movement should happen from the hip. So you go down and up. Let's do it two more times. One more. 
So feel the lengthening of the back, the lower back and your lats. Now I want you to extend the leg in front, one leg only, the toe points towards you. And let's do the same thing without rounding our back, without moving our neck. Feel the stretch in your lats, your lower back, your hamstrings and calf. So your entire segment. Now we do the same thing, hands up, extend. Without moving your hands up and down, hands close to your ears and lean forward. Lengthening of your hands. Let's do it one more time. And come back. Let's do the same thing on the other side. We are sitting in chair, facing front, lean forward and back. Two more. Let's do one more of this and let's extend that leg in front, toe towards you. Keep your torso tall, chin away from your chest and we do the same movement. Don't, don't move your neck ahead. Keep your shoulders back. Let's take our arms overhead and do the same thing. Two more of this. One more. And relax. Another very simple exercise that I would like to show you. Place your hands over here, push your feet back. Now all I want you to do, first do not lock your knees. I need soft knees. The minute load. So I need soft knees, place your hands and push that hip back. Again, feel the stretch, feel the lengthening of these arms because all of these are constantly in a business style. Let's do it one more time. Knee soft, drop, head, hip in one line. And let's go further down. So we have a hip because we are professional sitters. We are sitting all the time. All the internal stabilizers of a hip get shortened and it prevents the efficient movement around the hip. So again, what is the joints above that, your lumbar, joints below that, your knee, they get hypermobile. Now they are not geared to take and to take all the range of motion. A hip is an amazing joint given by in the center of our body, aligning it from top to bottom. So if our hip is tight and it has dropped in, it's the movement of the hip. So the joints above and below it get overstrained and go into injuries. So a very simple movement that we could do is keeping your toe on the floor, just Open out that knee, the open out of the hip here, your entire body. The right hip stays in place. Just take your left knee out and in. So you can feel your right, the left hip muscle tightening up. Now because we are, our hip muscle, our glutes get deactivated. Now, the most important balancing muscle in our body. Three major mu muscles which are, but if it's deactivated, again, your hamstring and your lower back muscles come into play and you land up with issues. Let's do this the other side. Open out. Don't move it.
Let's do two more of this. One more and relax. Now we come to a very important aspect of our body, the ankle joint. We actually think that our entire weight is worn by our ankles, which is not correct. Ideally speaking, your ankle should have only 40% of your body weight. 60% of your body weight should be taken up by your spine. Our spine is designed in an S-shaped manner to take your body weight. But if we lose the curvature, we are loading our knees, we are loading our ankle. So get up with issues because these small joints are not geared to take our weight. So the instability of our ankle is tight 90% of the time of an overactive knee joint. We stand with our left knee pointing to the left, right toe pointing in the front, hip pointing in the front, and just drop sideways and back. Try to get your knee over your toe. So it's okay. I'm trying to increase the length of your Achilles tendon because if your Achilles is tight, your mobility of your ankle joint is compromised. Let's do the same thing on the right side. Again, do not turn your hip. Torso hip faces the front, right toe to the right, left toe facing the front. I hope you can see me. Lean sideways and come back. Keep your shoulders facing out, go down. Feel the stretch and back. Feel the stretch and back. Increasing the lengthening of your hip flexors. Again, very, very, very of our sitting professions, hip flexors get tight. So it's a lunge pull. I would like you to take support of the chair, get your left foot in front and take your right leg back. Right heel is off the floor, left on your ankle. The minute you do this, you're creating an opening in the front of your hip. Now, all I want you to do is drop that knee down and extend it. So you'll feel this side in front opening out. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Right leg in front, left leg back, hip facing the front. Go all the way down as much as you can and extend it. Take support if you want. What I don't want to do is a front and back. It's a down and up. Okay. Now, a plantar fascia. Most people complain of pain in the sole of the feet. Again, that's because we may have a tight hamstring, which has led to a tight calf, which has led to an overactive Achilles. The Achilles tendon goes beneath the sole and lodges itself there. So the sole of your foot is in a constant state of contraction, which causes plantar fasciitis. So the problem may not be there. It could just be your drooping shoulders, which has created a drop of the hip, tight hamstrings and plantar fasciitis. So we need to keep the posture in place to prevent injuries anywhere in the body. We need to keep balance. We have opposing muscles. For example, your biceps and your triceps, front of your thighs, back of your thighs. If there is any imbalance, say your hand strings are stronger than your quadriceps, the front of your If you can create a pull on the joints, it will create a shift in the joint eventually over a period of time. And you will be walking in the wrong form, sitting in the wrong form, playing the sport in the wrong form, and eventually you will land up with injuries. So the most important thing is balance. 
you have to earn it. So you have to work towards it. Now, a one-hour session with uh, anyone for posture corrections, for example, mobility, is not really going to help you if for the remaining 10, 12 hours of the day, you're in the wrong posture. So what you need to do is to be aware. Be aware of the alignment. Be aware of the way you stand. Now, most people stand locking one leg and loading that leg, or you're on this side. Again, you're creating an imbalance here on this side. So one side, entire side gets stronger than the other. So people normally have issues on one side. So you could have a small cervical problem here on your left or a right ankle. So it all depends on the way you move for the rest of the day. So be aware of your posture, sit right, stand right. So you have to stand with equal weight on both your feet. And at no point of the time will you lock your knees. Locking means loading. Our knee joint is not geared to take our body weight. We need to have soft knees. We need to lengthen our spine, shoulder blades back and down and engage our hip so the from your ankle up to your hip and into your spine. Now, our hip and our spine have been made. We need to allow that. We need to get back to the form, the way we were born. You see a child crawling on the floor. He does it so easily because he's in a neutral spine position. There are no imbalances in his body. We need to get back there. And for that, we need to incorporate movements which are safe. We need to not load one side or one joint. A simple example I want to give. So most of our sofas or our chairs at work are designed which are very deep. So you land up, you know, sitting like this rounded back. What you need to do is place the cushion, let your hip as further back as you can and place the cushion slightly off base. That means it should not touch your hip, place it in your lower back and press into it. The minute you do that, the slight curvature of your spine which you have lost will come back. Automatically your chest will open out, your shoulders will be relaxed you are in a safe position. So check where you're sitting on a daily basis. Check where your workplace is. Check where your screen of your computer is, where your keypad is. If it is too high up, you're shrugging. If it is too low, you're bending forward. So it has to be at your elbow level. So your shoulders are relaxed, your chest is opened out, and there is no tension in your neck and shoulders. Because sitting in these wrong postures for a prolonged period of time is what causes injuries. It is not one sudden movement that creates injury. The slow changes are happening every time you're in that position over a prolonged period of time. And after a point, your body just gives way. So incorporate postural changes in your daily life. I hope you have gathered something from my talk and I hope I can help you in some way. Thank you so much. I'm open to questions now. All right, ma'am. Uh, we'll ask the questions one by one to you. Sure. What are the best mobility exercises for shoulders? So the ones that I showed you, you need to... Take your arms straight up and back and bring you 10 to 15 repetitions of these. So this increases the mobility. The reason our shoulders lose their mobility is because of the shrug and the drop in front. So our internal stabilizers here are tightened. So we just need to open them out by doing this three to four sets of 10 to 12 repetitions on a daily basis, 
to create a change over a period of time. It will not happen suddenly. Because if we suddenly create change, we will actually create micro tears in the muscles because they are so tight. You would not want to do anything suddenly. This has happened over a period of time. Slowly, as you keep doing these exercises, the length will come back, say, in a one and a half or two months, and you will get the efficiency and the whole range of movement back in the joint. All right, ma'am. Uh, the next question. When we talk about posture and lifting heavy weights, posture right. do matter, but how important is lifting heavy weights? So any movement. So when we lift, what comes to my mind is a deadlift. Everybody is doing a deadlift, right? So what is deadlift? In first, in a deadlift position, again, posture. From ground up, soft knees, abs engaged, hip engaged, lengthen your torso, shoulder blades back and down. You're here. You're not dropping forward. You're pushing that hip back. Your hands are close to your body. And up with your hip. You lift with your hip, not with your arms. The minute your arms are around and you've lost it, you could get a catch in your lower back. So... If your posture is right, you're dropping your hip back, you're sliding down. Now your hip is deactivated. You have weights in your hands. You push your shoulders back, activate your lats, and up. It's a hip thrust. You're coming up by the contraction of your glutes, and you're lifting with your glutes. So you don't feel it. So you could start with simple dumbbells. Then you could eventually increase the weight you should not feel the tension in your shoulders. The minute you're feeling the tension in your shoulders, that means you're doing it wrong. So you can go as heavy as you want, provided you're in the right form. All right, ma'am. The next question. After standing for six hours, I have a soul pain. What is the remedy? Yes. So again, standing, right? So when you're standing all the time, I mentioned most people stand with locked knees, and hip so this is hip now the minute you're here you're back right so you're going into tight hamstrings which is causing tight calf which is causing constant contraction extended which joins into the sole of your feet and because of that constant pull, you're getting pain in your soul. So you need to stand with soft knees. You need to stand with equal weight on all four corners of your feet. You cannot be here. You cannot be in front like this. Or you cannot shift and load your knee on that side. So the minute you are soft knees, you have shifted the weight off your ankle, off your knees, to your hip and your spine, and you will not get any soul pain. See, there's one thing I want to say here is that all our muscles are coated with myofascia, which is the covering of muscles. Now, artificial muscles begin and end from one, or they may cross the joint and go to a third joint, but they are not connected to each other. Say, for example, our biceps are not connected uh, a right bicep is not connected to a left thigh. But our myofascia, that is the coating of our muscles, are connected. You are connected from your toes to your nose with myofascia. So you could have a problem shrug over here and you could have a knee pain on the opposite side because of this drop traction along the transverse plane. You are locking your left knee and the load is coming here because of this diagonal drop. So we need to see where the posture is wrong. It may not be that if you have a knee pain, the problem is in the knee. The problem could be the opposite side shoulder. So we need corrections of the entire form for the pain and injury to completely go away. Uh, Ma'am, do you recommend us to sit on the floor rather than Any a chair? Any more questions? Uh, can you hear me, ma'am? Uh, 
Yes, I can hear you. Now again, everybody and anybody can sit on the floor if you have a flexible hip. Now, if you have been sitting for long hours, your glute muscles, your hip muscles are not tight, sitting on the floor will create a lot of tension in your lower back. And you may land up with aggravated lower back pain if you all day. So I would advise if you have an issue with the mobility, you sit down on the cushion, supports your back. A very good exercise here I might want to show you for hip mobility is this. So you're extending your hip, you're sitting back down, coming back to the opposite side, lifting up, coming down. But this you can do only under guidance. If your hip is mobile, you can do it easily, it's fine. But underlying passion, please do it under supervision of pain. Don't do it on your own. All right, ma'am. Uh, could you give us uh, some exercises for cramps? Uh, okay, so one of the main reasons for cramp is hydration. Again, uh, let me do a myofascia. I spoke to you about the coating of the myofascia. The myofascia is made up of 70% water. When we are in a state of dehydration and our body drops to less than 5 liters, the body body will calm the myofascia to maintain the volume in your vessels, blood vessels. So the myofascia moves our muscle. The minute water is taken out, there is friction. So the muscle may want to move, but the myofascia, because the water has been taken out, grips the muscle and prevents the movement. 90% of the time, that could be one of the reasons for cramps. The other reason for a cramp could be an electrolyte deficiency. So if potassium or magnesium require that for firing the cell, for creating uh, 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 energy. Now, move because of fuel and of a car will move because of the gas in it. So if the gas is unable to fire the engine, it will not happen. We need many catalysts to convert the energy into more. If there is a deficiency, like you're running, but the fuel is not getting fired into energy and not enough energy is reaching the cell, it shuts down. And when it shuts down, your body just stops, that muscle stops working and you go into a cramp. So there could be many, many reasons for this. Ma'am, I'm just interrupting you for a while. I yeah. think uh, there is an issue with... Your voice is cracking. Can you hear me? You can hear me now? Yes, I can do it. Ma'am, you uh, is it better now? Yes, ma'am, uh, a bit better. I'm just going moving on to the next question. Okay. What is the ideal sitting po a position while driving a car? Okay. So when we sit again, I knees will get to me for this, but car which is so when you are in these high-end cars which are very low and you're sitting your hip and your knee and that aggravated contraction of your hip flexors hips back shoulders are round Ideally, for a car, you should be able to walk into the car and sit 
where I get the magic angle is right angle. Right angle, right angle, right angle. If you're able to maintain that, it is the most efficient form because if you're driving for say six, seven hours or two hours, you're in traffic and you're hunched over, you're dropped velocity of your abs, actually land up with cervical and lower back or knee problems. So another thing that you could do is the same thing that I said here, you could place a cushion which prevents the loss of curvature. So that because of the cushion, you're able to maintain the curvature and you're not dropping back down and you're able to get some kind of form back. So if in your lumbar is a regular cushion, that could help you in driving. Okay, ma'am. Uh, what are some exercises for flat feet? Uh, now, for that uh, flat feet, we have a complete different set of exercises to create activation of the plantar fascia. So it is called as barefoot training. So creating a short foot. Uh, we need to, uh, I mean, I'll need to have a separate session for that. But uh, ideally speaking, in a flat foot, there is no arch, right? So because there is no arch, your feet have dropped in. Because your feet have dropped in, your knees have buckled in. So again, it leads to a lot of imbalance everywhere and you're not efficient in your movement. Now we cannot correct flat feet. We need to do exercises called as short foot, which activates the plantar fascia. You can also get soles, which will slightly correct it. But again, I feel exercises are going to help you more. You need proper proprioception from the ground up. So people who are flat footed, I would actually advise them to work out. So be aware there are different exercises of individual toes, of uh, 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 different types of gripping, activating each uh, 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 the, the fingers of your toes, creating a lot of movement in your calf to correct the plantar fasciitis, which normally happens to people. But I'll have to take a separate session for that. It's, it's like not one simple exercise. All right, ma'am. Uh, can you show some exercises to reduce knee pain? Uh, okay. So if you have knee pain, <clears throat> uh, I'll show it to you on the floor. Or you could do it on the bed. So I would want you to sit with your back to the wall. I hope you guys can see me. Yes, ma'am. Now you can roll a towel or you can keep your foot, your, your leg on the cushion with the cushion under your knee. Now you have rested your back. All I want you to do is lock your knees down, get your toes towards you and relax. Press that knee down, get that toe towards you and relax. So this will actually ease out your hamstrings and calf, which are tight. 90% of the time, we have the muscles around the knee, which are tight. One important muscle that I would like to talk about here is your outer thigh muscle. So a simple exercise in out the outer thigh muscle would be, say it is your left knee, you cross that leg over with your left hand, you gently apply pressure on your thigh, not on your knee, and press that knee down and lean forward. So you are going to feel the tension along the outer thigh. Again, when I'm leaning forward, if I'm leaning forward like this, you won't see any difference. But if you maintain the form, place your hand here, press it down and lean forward, you'll actually feel the tension all the way to your hip and to your knee. Now this releases the 
ITB band and the TFL ligament, which connects your hip to your knee, which is tight most of the time because we are sitting. And this simple exercise will release the knee pain. All right, ma'am. Uh, do our food habits affect our capacity to exercise? A hundred percent. So uh, I firmly believe that we need to eat right. So since uh, I give nutrition plans, depending on the sport, depending on the kind of movement you're doing and the type, the time the movement is happening. So what you eat before workout, what you eat during the workout, say you have an 18 hole game, what you need to eat an hour before, what to eat on the ninth hole, what to eat at the end for recovery is very important. Because if you do not give the right kind of food, you definitely go into micro injuries. The recovery of the muscles will take longer and it will affect your performance. So yes, nutrition is very, very important. And hydration, water is very, very important. All right, ma'am. Uh, can you show some exercises to increase hip flexibility? Yes. Had shown a simple one for you. Toe in front. You take it out and sit up. I floor. The other one would be again sitting, keeping one hip firmly on the chair, you just lift that foot up and back. Full foot. It's not down and up. Take your full foot down and up. So you're creating ability of one side. Once you're done, it's the same thing on the efficient exercise for creating hip mobility. Do not do serratives. You're just taking this out and in. Uh, Ma'am, moving on to the next question. What is the best position yes. to sleep in? Whichever position you're comfortable in. Because at that point of time, your entire metabolism is slow your heart rate, your breathing, your, uh, ideally speaking, you should not eat anything at least three to four hours before you sleep because when you sleep, everything slows down. Now, if you have a stomach full of food, the digestion will not happen right and that may lead to issues the next day in terms of bloating, acidity, gas, etc. So if you've eaten around three and a half hours before, you can sleep at the position you are comfortable in, provided right pillow or you're not uh, uh, having edge which is extremely soft. Yeah, so it's better to have supported, uh, core supported so that, you know, your body does not dip down in it. And whatever position you're comfortable in, because your muscles are not working, you're completely relaxed at that point of time. All right, ma'am. Moving on to the next question. Uh, is cycling good for the hips uh, for a golf athlete? Uh, when we are cycling, again, positions. Yeah. So we are talking about cycling, on the, uh, cycling at the gym. So if you're cycling you the height of your seat. So when you're going, I need full extension. But if you're doing this and no full extension of your hip, your knee and flexion of your ankle is happening, you're going to into contraction. So you don't preferably in the gym without the backrest because again then you're here and then you're talking on the phone and you're cycling away oh I cycled for two hours but it's not going to really help you 
But if you're in the right form and say, these are my legs and I'm going into full extension of my, my angle, that will definitely help you. All right, ma'am. Uh, a person with multiple prolapse of L1234 and S1, wouldn't this bring more stress? Right. For what will bring more stress? Uh, someone has asked this question. Person with okay. multiple prolapse of L1234 and S1. The lumbar, the entire lumbar area, yes. Again, he needs to check his form. The reason there is a prolapse is because of wrong form. We need basic corrections. You cannot do a movement like a swing or a pivoting of leg or any kind of activity which is not supervised because if you're doing that in the wrong form, you would just aggravate your condition. So 90% of the time, unless if there's a, an actual nerve compression, which is creating a lot of pain where you're advised complete bed rest, other than that, movement is what is going to correct. But these movements have to be supervised uh, by a professional who knows the job and give movements which will release those tight muscles and correct the posture which is leading to the prolapse. See, it is the muscles which create movement, right? The joint itself does not move on its own. It is a contraction of my flexors here and my biceps which is creating this movement. So if I'm constantly creating the wrong kind of movement, my joint is going to be affected. So we need to know what kind of movement the person is in 24 seven, which has created the prolapse. We need to correct that to correct the prolapse. Uh, he has another question, ma'am. Yeah. What, what are the cause of multiple prolapse? Uh, any stretch Posture. or? Posture. Right. Any, and any? you cannot give a stretch without seeing the person. So, you know, I might show a stretch, which might be, if he's not doing it right, it might be detrimental. So I will first have to gauge him from top to bottom, figure out the imbalance. The lumbar prolapse could be, again, as I said, because of ankle immobility or shoulder immobility, you know. So I need to check that, give corrections away from that area. Correcting that area is not going to help initially. I need to be away from that area, figure out where the problem is, do corrections over there, which will release the contraction in that region and which will eventually strengthen it so that he could do basic movements. Uh, Ma'am, any stretch or yoga exercise activates sciatica, why is that so? Uh, I have to be very diplomatic in answering this question. Everybody has a different level of flexibility, right? Now, when you are not flexible enough, so if I'm asking you a simple thing to go down and touch your toes, right? Now, if you're unable to do this and you start rounding your back and you're here and then somebody tells you, okay, go lower, touch the toes, touch the toes and keep the legs straight, I'm going to overstretch. As I said, our muscles go into a state of spasm because of the movement that we are doing. It could be sitting in the wrong form, driving in the wrong form. You can't suddenly stretch. If stretch suddenly, you will create micro tears which will aggravate condition. It has to be slow, controlled, and Personal. I am specifying on that because if you watch on YouTube and do it on your own, you might actually strain and increase the aggravation at that area rather than curing it. All right, ma'am, we have one last question. Uh, could you please suggest some exercise for the glute muscle? Yes. Absolutely. So, <laughs> It's all in the glutes. The glute is one of Sorry. 
the glute is one of the most important balancing a very, very simple exercise. Please shift your weight to your right, keep the right knee soft, and float the other leg off. You will not be able to stand up. I'm sorry. You will not be able to stand on that single leg if I'm not activating the glute. You can activate the glute when you're standing. So, equal weight on both your feet and go slightly back. Mm -hmm. Keep distance between your feet. Soft knees. Pull your navel to your spine. Engage. Engage. Engage your glutes. Lengthen your torso. And just stand there. Keeping the glutes engaged with your knees soft is an amazing and a very, very simple thing for them. So you could shift and stand there. If this is easy, you could go into a heel lift over here. If you have good glute strength, you can do that. So these are very, very simple basic exercises. And then there are so many hip lifts, full bridge, weighted bridge, but that comes later on. The first important thing is activation. The minute you're able to activate, you can increase the load by increasing the weights and the strength on it. Uh, Ma'am, we don't have any more questions for now. Uh, you can continue if you want to. If, if you want to end the session, you can do that. Any more questions? No more questions, ma'am. Can you hear me? No. Can you hear me, ma'am? Am I audible? Ma'am, am I audible? I cannot hear you. Hello, can you hear me? Am I audible, ma'am? Hello. Can you hear me, ma'am? Can you hear me? Hello. Ma'am, can you hear me? Can you hear me, ma'am? I can't show anyone. Hello? Ma'am, can you Hello? hear me? Can you yes, hear me, I can hear you. Yes, uh, ma'am, if you want to continue, you can uh, continue. We have no questions left. Yeah, okay, fine. Because I was not getting any response, so. Okay. 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 Yes, okay. Perfect. I'm so getting. I, I have able to uh, try to solve everyone's questions. Uh, you can uh, uh, contact me separately if you have any further problems. I'm glad to help. Just remember that. It's all in your posture. So your efficiency at work, be it your mind, because if your form is right, uh, enough oxygen is reaching your cells, you're able to function better. If your form is right, the posture is right, 
you're pain free. So if you're pain free, your movements are more efficient. And uh, eating right is a very important aspect because uh, the right amount of carbs, proteins, and fats are required for recovery. Uh, you need to eat everything within normal limits and uh, avoid eating sugar. Sugar is very inflammatory. I had to add that. So uh, sugar actually aggravates pain because it is so, so highly inflammatory. So any kind of sugars, sugar foods, uh, sweets, desserts, etc. actually uh, uh, brings your body back down, you know. And uh, the level that you achieve by putting in that effort for workouts and everything is, is not because you're in a state of inflammation. So avoid eating sugars as much as you can. Uh, eat food which is not overcooked, which has maintained its nutritious value. Sleep well. Sleep is very, very important for recovery. Drink enough water, at least two and a half to three liters a day. So, uh, yeah, that's about it. I hope you all have uh, a great injury-free life. That's all from here. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for joining us. I would like to thank all of you. And please subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel, which is Champ for Life Academy. And once again, thank you all of you for joining this session. So we are closing this session right now. Have a nice time.